Asmita, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I am unable to start the video. My uh, yeah. Okay. This message people to come. Okay, so somebody has message. Okay, uh, so good evening, everyone. So I'm really happy that uh, this is the 30th module of uh, fine neurophilia series. Uh, so, and um, I made this uh, module in a jiffy uh, because uh, you know that exam was over on 10th and you must have seen how the questions were. It was all uh, long questions with clinical scenarios which we had some doubt that this could be the scenario, like uh, some scenario change could occur because uh, that was the pattern in the NEAT UG. So that could be reflected. We had doubted that. So that had definitely shown here also in our exam. And uh, to our surprise, it was lengthy paper, not, not a surprise as, as expected, kind of expected. It was a lengthy paper. And, um, and uh, I have seen in the groups that everyone is tense what the answers uh, to most of the questions are. The problem with this, this uh, paper is that it's not like the last year paper. Even for the last year paper, I had found difficulty. Uh, I had, had taken five days to compile the paper. Uh, and, and I was pretty sure because uh, most of the toppers who had told, uh, who had uh, written both the mock exam as well as their actual ranks, that is actual marks and the mock exam marks that the recall marks were kind of similar. But this is a bit difficult because you are unable to recall the stem of the question even properly. That is one uh, problem and the options also because it was lengthy one. So with that disclaimer, I will just start. So I need, I think 51 are there eager people who have finished their NEAT exams and those people who are like planning to write the exam next year. So I don't want that confusions to remain. So I kind of uh, got most of the questions uh, uh, which you have uh, put up, put up some people uh, like uh, Neha, uh, Yamini, uh, so many people, I, uh, Naresh, uh, Ijaz, so many have given me the questions. Um, uh, sorry if I forgot some people because uh, I was fully in, looking into the computer for long. Um, so let's go. So this whole concept of neurophilia was started about... Uh, and about, uh, I think it was on a Sunday, 30th of one Sunday, that is most, prob most probably August uh, Sunday, uh, that there should be some teaching, which could be, should be a free le learning platform for you all, be inspired on this uh, movie. But later I know, came to know that the hero is not Hrithik Roshan. It's actually somebody else who is behind this. And uh, I may not be that big and all, but that is the true inspiration behind starting all this work. And I uh came up with this because this is the magic number of 30 and we are going into the 30th episode of or the module of this fine neurophilia series so this was the first one uh, i'm telling all this because i feel that the most of the videos or modules are a bit underutilized you may think that these videos are there most people are not using it i'm assessing based on the number of views which are uh, views which we are seeing in this uh, fine neurophilia, which you can just type fine neurophilia and you will be able to assess this. So this was the first one, which was conducted. Uh, that was on December 16, 2020, uh, when the corona was at its peak. Uh, and uh, then, uh, so uh, then came, so this was the initial goals I had told you. That is mainly, it was not just to generate like teach you MCQs and all, it was to generate interest among you people. I am telling in detail because you have finished your exam, so a bit free, so I am taking your time. That's why I asked you to come a bit early for this class. And this was to make you love your subject as well as your books, because no coaching class, coaching centers could help you learn. You know, spooning, spoon feeding like what you have done and 10th is enough. You have to read, understand because you are going to treat your patients. And our aim was NEED 2021, which is over yesterday, day before yesterday. And I wanted you to meet some people 
which i was able to do so because some living legends are there you must have seen dr mohammad kunju sir uh, dr sudhir kotari sir uh, dr ashish who is a specialist in movement disorder so so many people and this was papa neuron which i initially introduced to you so study history also along with neurology now most of you will be getting into neurology in a few days also get acquainted with the books apart from these the ones which i showed earlier other neurology books very interesting ones and regarding neurophilia all this content about 35 hours of free content is there and if you see i i also am, i am unable to take uh, like recollect where these questions because most of the questions which you had given me in whatsapp and telegram i could make out that i had seen it somewhere in my when i i had put that questions because uh, that co co gate in parkinsonism i had put that question same question but i was unable to re re retrieve it but later i could actually so that shows that these all questions are there in these free modules which are available under fine forum of indian neurology education so just type this is all what is neurology is but you have to learn then come back to this and get that mcq orientation so uh, tell your colleagues juniors to make use of it uh, it doesn't matter if they go for uh, paid coaching classes and all but make this uh, use of this also uh, this shouldn't go unattended because uh, i am seeing that number of use of this are less uh, and all but there's a lot of effort goes into putting these modules and very clinically useful for you also and apart from this fine modules i have st I, you know about my group which was the initial one which i had set up a whatsapp group which initially started as six people later it is overflowing so i started the telegram group then the youtube channel and uh, then facebook then for question putting the question i had uh, joined the startup Uh, so that it could be more economical to you all i am unable to do questions daily and give it cater to you all that is why i put join the tackle not no monetary reasons nothing else it's uh, just for ease for you and for me so make use of this because if you see these questions most of them were from tackle uh, from fine neurophilia as such so today what we are going to discuss is regarding what is uh what it, we cannot actually reproduce all the questions which are being asked it is so i hope you heard the pep talk <laughs> but uh let's uh, see the sorry okay so uh, type in the chat box whether you are able to see the questions are you able to see the questions are you able to see the questions yes or no can you just type are you able to hear me two things okay. yes sir we can hear you yeah, okay fine uh, no need to raise somebody has raised the hand but you can just type type in the chat box because already we are uh, late so this question um, yes i guess can any participant yes 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 okay oh fine fine so this question the first one which i have put is being repeatedly asked in the previous entrances also so there couldn't be less of a doubt regarding the question so a child presented with mental retardation dystonia seizures and tremors his mri brain is shown below what is the most likely diagnosis so does anyone have a controversy regarding this question uh whether there are stem of the question because i i think that this question uh, shouldn't have much of a like a, a doubt whether uh, based on the mri if this is the mri given there shouldn't be much of a doubt yes typical eye of a tiger sign is not given uh, is what uh, somebody people think not the classical one okay what were the options is the but these all findings that is mental retardation dystonia and the clinical conditions they are expecting uh, are like they are describing doesn't fit into uh, the tip, the picture of what you call any other sim syndromes which we have uh, seen uh, like we are describing here as the mcq options 
so this most likely uh, is a pank2 mutation which is a recurrent repeat question so i it was asked in actually previous aims also so i think this or the, this kind of questions could be the most likely uh, this thing Ho hope you are able to hear this now here you are able to hear now so you are, so this is eye of tiger appearance so it may not be that uh, what you call uh, conspicuous in an mri so eye of tiger why why does this eye of tiger appearance occur that is the important question so eye of tiger sign refers to bilateral abnormal low signal on the t2 weighted mri due to abnormal accumulation of iron so these are actually neurodegenerative diseases with brain iron accumulation so this iron are getting accumulated in the globus pallidus and this causes a high signal intensity in the globus pallidus but why that uh, signal loss occurs because central high in the signal is due to basically due to gliosis and uh, spongiosis so low signal is basically due to iron so iron causes low signal intensity around and when there is gliosis in the center that causes t2 hyper intensity that typically shows kind of a hyper intense iron like what you call here you can see right that uh, typical eye of tiger appearance here so that uh, that is actually a cake walk for you and other conditions so if options were will since it's a rare condition where you could get a uh, uh, this eye of tiger appearance a typical parkinsonism opc poisoning even in a high tesla mri that region could be seen so uh, this uh, this i'll tell you the, uh, the, uh, the different thing that is even in a nba in early stages this eye of tiger appearance may not be that clear so that is why that is a, a very important fact also so clinical features is the one you have to look in for so it may not, not be like we you can make the diagnosis based on the mri alone it, it is it should be based on the clinical st the stem that the symptoms given in the stem of the question so most of the pcan as you know is affecting in the extra pyramidal system so whether it's it was given as dystonia dysarthria and other rigid extra pyramidal symptoms whether dystonia was given whether tremors were there and seizures seizures are also have been reported frequently in this pcan syndrome so that and also if you see at the fundus of these patients there is retinal pigment uh, epithelium degeneration rp not retinitis pigmentosa it is something different it is optic atrophy followed by associated with retinal degeneration which could be found in pcan so this is a, actually an autosomal recessive kind of disorder so keep this table in mind for future people who are writing the exam next time this table uh woodhouse sakati syndrome and all are asked repeatedly kufor rakeb also the mutation is being asked atp 13a2 mutation is asked this table is important it's don't uh, dismiss as uh, unimportant ones so this eye of tiger uh, this jan panta double panda uh, etc etc you will remember the other things which are being mentioned excelling autosomal recessive and other things you keep in mind which could be asked in the next exam for the others who are planning to write next time so second question so in this question i think some people have a doubt because that question the mri was not that conspicuous or clear whether it was an eye of tiger appearance but based on the history which i got from you i think it is an eye of tiger appearance along with features suggestive of a pcan what is the false statement for the picture shown below please read the question uh, and uh, what 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 is the sign shown what is the sign shown please type fast what is the sign uh, uh, this yes gover sign na huh? gover sign so you don't have any doubt that this is a gover sign and it is associated with the options given where whether it is associated with calf hypertrophy lower reflexes lower limb reflexes are lost early in the disease proximal weakness may be there ck is highly elevated have you got any doubt in the options okay you think uh, okay 
people are saying there is no doubt yes okay so calf hypertrophy may be associated with calf hypertrophy yes second option is lower limb reflexes are lost early in the disease proximal weakness may be there ck is highly elevated if you think these options and this question along with this picture is perfect then i would go with an answer of b i'll tell you why you may think that okay this calf hypertrophy is a pseudo hypertrophy so first when we see a patient we see the hypertrophy alone later only we differentiate it this whether it is a calf hypertrophy or a pseudo hypertrophy that is one more thing so whether it is not mentioned as a true hypertrophy or a pseudo hypertrophy so some people who have marked as pseudo hyper that a as an option uh, will keep it in the end we'll discuss in the end but b i think it's a bit important the lower limb reflexes are lost actually a bit late in case of dmd so go a sign positive means we have been classically been learning for from time immemorial that it is due to a duchenne muscular dystrophy or a becker's type of disease causing proximal weakness that is the reason why patient climbs on to himself that is climbing on to himself he first climbs on say, his tibia then his knee then his thigh then his hip region then his. have you seen such patients yes i'll show you so this so deep tendon reflexes usually remain normal or are, must be decreased but usually are normal and ankle jerk you should understand are relatively present or preserved till the terminal stages while the knee jerk reflexes that is ankle will be preserved even at the end stage when the patient is non ambulant but the knee jerk reflex could be a bit less but the first things could which are going are actually upper limb reflexes which are going act will go, come to that so if you if there is a there is a study which looked into the reflexes of these patients uh so this is a genuine study i forgot to got the reference uh, i'll put in the group for the references so the biceps triceps and the knee jerk the biceps triceps and the knee jerk are the first tendon reflexes to be lost and they are lost even before the end of ambulation that is uh, when the patient starts to be on the wheelchair goes goes to be like loses his ambulation and you know the radial reflex is obtainable for a slightly longer period and is lost in about uh, a 50 percentage after ambulation also and the one thing that is the lower limb ankle jerk is the last to be lost being absent only in about 4 percentage of ambulatory patients so in the last stages of the disease when all other reflexes are lost in 95 to 100 percentage of patients ankle jerk is still obtainable over one third so you may think that uh because of even the proximal weakness uh that uh, ankle jerk is the last to go in case of a duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, this is an important early in the disease process cpk levels are very much elevated so it is in 10000s and all so that is 50 to 300 times elevated than the normal values and uh, highest in case of duchenne and less elevated in case of a becker variant so that keep in mind i'll just show you two videos so this is one my, one of my patients just see carefully if you are able to see if so he's like trying to get up he came exactly one and a half months back see how he is climbing onto himself you want to see the video again i'll show you see he's sitting so do you think this is duchenne muscular dystrophy see how is climbing first tibia then knee joint then hip joint and no thighs then the hip joint and then getting up so the same patient walking to the what is this it's a duck waddling kind of gait tradelen berg kind of gait which we see so all these mcqs do you think it is beckers right yes you think it's beckers why you would think with because seen in others like gbs here i am coming to that so i'll get, give you a catch this patient's elder sister who is now 17 elder sister i am telling who is 17 years i didn't keep the video i have the video in my phone 17 years also had the same problem 
when she but she didn't she have a mild kind of uh, illness uh, if you want i can show the video uh, but it's in the phone i didn't transfer to, into it so uh, this patient also had uh, what you call same kind of so how can it be becker still don't go with becker so this is a female i am talking elder sister is having same problem so don't go for becker in this patient uh, because i am giving a history that this patient's elder sister is having uh, same problem right so may, uh, one more thing that this male x linked x linked inheritance uh, so these x linked inherited diseases are becker duchin and what is one more thing is emery refuse right emery refuse has got also a both component autosomal dominant recessive as well as x linked components are there that will come later so what do you think this is duchin or becker but we i went uh, like i got this report i think when the, this is 19th november 2021 i got the report date of reporting was 15 december i got the report that is exactly one month back so you you we couldn't find any pathological entity so that is what i was planning to convey through this video that goa sign is not specific or for any dmd machine muscular dystrophy it could be even be positive in case of what even a perthes disease even other limb girdle muscular dystrophy even some people were saying any proximal weakness you can get but it is more characteristic when patient coming with other features like if if, if i said na calf super, uh, pseudo hypertrophy and other features so th then you have to keep your C cpk is severely uh, dilated like uh, elevated cardiomyopathy such features think of dm uh, dmd and other things so these are the things these uh, landmarks that is 9 to 10 11 years he will be wheelchair bound all these things are repeatedly asked especially for pediatrics as well as neurology students so keep that in mind this page also in mind so uh, i am not just planning to give you answers just plain answers to the mcqs i am planning to give you some teachings which you can take away when you going to a neurology clinic or those for those who are planning to write the exam next time so a patient presents with ataxia and following i finding which among the following is an incorrect statement what do you think so uh what do you think is the is the option and the choices correct according to you yes yes okay so if the options and the stem of the question along with the picture are kind of resembling then what do you think the answer is yes havita shoy uh, gorav everyone thinks that yes the answer is periodic x rays must be taken to rule out malignancy is the incorrect statement why because i think that ataxia telangiectasia is a cancerous condition it is prone to the patient is prone to develop cancer so shouldn't we screen with x rays other methods to look for cancer why do you think it is wrong it is definitely a dna repair defect nystagmus it is a nataxic condition so nystagmus is there afp is definitely raised that is how we diagnosed uh, diagnosed this uh, condition based on the serum testing so the important thing regarding ataxia telangiectasia is that the gene defect is in atm gene it causes double stranded make uh, that uh, that gene recognizes the breaks and seals it so when it is impaired then we get this telangiectasia ataxia choreoathetosis recurrent infections and malignancy so my question is regarding malignancy for checking for uh, chest infection shouldn't we take go for recurrent x rays and all we are not supposed to w whatever way possible avoid taking x rays because this disease is highly radio sensitive so if any other modality you can uh, use to diagnose a uh, lymphoma or leukemia affecting any other organs better avoid x rays and go with the other modality so that is the question uh, that is what the examiner wanted you to know so people with ataxia telangiectasia are very sensitive to the effects of radiation and because of x ray and you know x rays are source of ionizing radiation that could damage the chromosomes and harm the tissues and cause these uh, problems 
So that is an important point. So very relevant question, which has been asked for you people. So fourth question, a patient having clinical symptoms of multiple sclerosis has started on a new drug before initiation, which virus has to be checked? This I have repeatedly uh, told you regarding my module in fine neurophilia on multiple sclerosis, both basics and advanced about this question. So I am pretty sure nobody would have made wrong in that, right? Have, has anybody uh, made mistake in this question? No, right? Yes. Happy to see that. So, and they have given the name as jo John Cunningham virus, right? John Cunningham virus. So uh, my question, you have to put it in the chat box. Who is John Cunningham? I, you should be curious by now. You have finished your exam. You're free right now. And those who are planning to write also should be curious. What is the, who is this John Cunningham? You must have learned only JC, 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 JC. Yes. Very good, Ratnish. It is, he is a patient who was having PMLE, that is progressive HIV patient having progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. And that is John Cunningham. So you, you, may remember, you may remember the Cunningham book in anatomy, right? Remember like that. So progressive, this I, I needn't repeat. You just go back to the fine neurophilia module on multiple sclerosis. Everything is there. This, I think I just copied it from that module for just the sake. Uh, so same thing I'm telling. Uh, so it will be affecting this JC virus. We have multiple cells, man. neurons, oligodendrocytes, astroglia, glia, microglia, etc. So where does this affect? It affects the oligodendrocytes and it causes multiple problems like ataxia, visual disturbance and encephalopathy. And it's potentially fatal. And there is no specific treatment as such for PMLE. Better you go for uh, plasma phoresis and all. And uh, this one, other causes, apart from this, some causes, if you see, you may have seen multiple case reports. So most common is an HIV patient developing PMLE, then multiple sclerosis patient developing PMLE when they are started on metalizumab. That's why we have to look into whether the patient is JC virus positive. And even the, after six months of starting, we have to check. All has been clearly written in Harrison as well as in Bradley. And other drugs, I have kept a list of all the other drugs. So this is just a, so may, main chunk is by HIV disease. You have seen now. So these were the trials, which I had described in that, uh, this regarding uh, in the module regarding natalizumab. So what is this JC virus? So it is a human polyoma virus and it is named after the patient, John, John Cunningham. Cunningham. Similar in lines to this question, one more question was asked. That is an HIV positive patient presented with confusion, seizures, decreased vision and weakness. The MRI image is given below. What is the condition he is suffering from? So tell me in the chat box. Uh, I am pretty sure the MRI is not like this. I tried to get the MRI based on the description from the students. They told that the MRI showed most of a, most likely a posterior hyperintensity with temporal involvement. And the last picture, they said, okay, that picture, third one, no? this one below picture of MRI was kind of there, but mostly it was kind of a posterior insult, which was there. So do you agree with what I say? And did the HIV positive patient, prolonged HIV positive patient had all these features of confusion, seizures, decreased vision and weakness? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then we are in the right track. We have uh, recalled the right question and the options. Um, I got the options of PMLE, occipital hemorrhage, occipital infarct, and I kept an option of press. So I am not sure whether press was there or not. Um, so based on this, I'll tell you, this all suggests HIV positive patient means most likely it is a PMLE, but the close differential would be a press, definitely a press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, because it is kind of posterior predominant. If it was the MRI, which you have got as kind of posterior predominant, definitely keep press as a differential diagnosis. But I think because that HIV positive, that is a key word there. Yeah, 20 years HIV positive. Very good, Yamini. So if that is there, then definitely it's most likely 
to be a PMLE that, uh, so press was not given. So I just wanted you to know that press could be a DD. Uh, that is uh, what I wanted to uh, tell you. So are you able to see me clearly? Just tell me because I have put lots of effort to multiple cuts. I understand three cuts. Uh, yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. That is PMLE. So what happens? It's kind of a demyelinating disorder. Please see fine neurophilia. Even if you, when, if you have finished your portions, it's the best time to uh, read, see, go back and uh, read all this with a peace of mind, relaxed mind. Previously you were tense. Now you have enough time. If you think that you need to do well in your neurology, just go back, read these modules while uh, at your free time. So a short stature child had presented with mild developmental delay, no mental retardation. On examination, there was co-species hepatomegaly, but no corneal clouding. What is the diagnosis? Nobody who was with me should make mistake in this. Uh, I'm, uh, there was some controversy regarding, uh, so history of poor drug compliance was there too. In this question you're telling? Or previous one. Okay. Uh, do you think the question and the options were the same? Was Gaucher's there? Hunter San Filippo Hurlers were there. Any other uh, option did you find? Or shall we proceed with the question? Okay. We we'll shall proceed. I had, okay. okay. You have the answer of Hunter, right? Okay. Fine. So I am telling you this. Uh, so the answer is Hunter. Because I used to remember during my MD days, I think as hunter needs to hunt properly. So hunter needs to hunt properly. So he shouldn't have a corneal clouding. If he has corneal clouding, how, how will he hunt properly? How will he, how will he aim properly at animals and all his target? That is how I used to remember that others most likely had these kind of corneal clouding, other, other MPS, that is mucopolysaccharides. This uh, question was, I may, I was very happy to see this question. You, do, you, do you know why? Because if you see, this was in a tackle mock, mock six, sixth mock. Uh, I had a gut feeling that this could, this will be asked. So I had put it the same question and not the same question. I forgot what the question was in the explanation part. I have written like this, uh, next slide, it will come. I had told regarding Hunter, Harler, Morkyo, etc. Below is given a very high yield table. Thank me after neat SS exam. This was the wordings I had given. I just checked whether uh, I remember this question and just went back and checked. So if you have the tackle, just see, go back where I have written it. I think it's mock six where I have written. So this was the table I was telling you. So if you see all these MPS one by one, all clearly writes is clearly everything is written. Hurler, early clouding of cornea. She's has cloudy cornea. Hunter, no clouding of cornea. So, and also you have next exam. I expect this, uh, uh, this uh, deficiency of enzymes uh, is the most likely. So that could be. So in this exam, if something is asked next exam, most probable thing would be in and around this thing. So that is the usual pattern. So, uh, so that is why that I was very happy to see that. So the, the mock exam, I had written this tag me after the neat text. Nobody thanked me. It's fine. Uh, I'm just happy <laughs> seeing this question. So, uh, seventh question, which test is used to detect the sensory neural hearing loss in a three-year-old child is the options where play audiometry, pure tone audiometry visual reinforcement audiometry, behavioral audiometry. Uh, it's a difficult question. I haven't, I am also a bit weak in pediatric neurology. I, I admit that. Uh, so I called up uh, Dr. Mohamed Kunyusar and um, asked for his help to find answer for this. Uh, so you think some people, so the question was same, right? So kind of similar. I think all options were also similar according to you. Yes, I guess, right? So uh, if it is play audiometry, yes, yes. So some people are thinking, Arjun thinks that it's play audiometry. So yeah, 
some one person think that thinks that it is pure talk. So I, since I didn't have any clue, so I asked Dr. Mohammed Kunju sir to help me out with this question. So he helped me with the book. Actually, this is Essentials of Audiology. So in this, it is answer as supposed to be a play audiometry. Uh, I'll I'll magnify it and show you. So in here, it is written that. Uh, play audiometry is often appropriate for children between two and five years of age. This was the wording in that book. So based on this, I think the most likely answer would be play audiometry. So this is Essentials of Audiology by Stanley Gelfand. And I think it, sh it should be there in some of the uh, Nelson or something. I couldn't refer to that book. Uh, this is contributed by Dr. Mohamed Vinusa. So... Hope uh, that satisfies your confusion. Hope you are happy with that. Visual three months. Any confusion? Uh, okay, okay. You are adding on. Arjun is a pediatrician, I guess. Okay, fine. Good, good. Thank you. Fine. So then a simple question. So this nobody can go wrong because uh, even if I don't teach you, you know that autosomal dominant this type one is de uh, demanding only type two is basically purely axon and there are exceptions here and there but most likely this is the rule of thumb so type two only one has got axonal that is type cmt 2a so basically uh, if you see uh, it is t1 is demanding t2 is axonal and then we have the digerin sota disease Four is also demyelinating type, right? Oh, this I kept. I couldn't find the question. There was one question for you regarding um, uh, these things. Now, this was also a, a one I had given in my mock exam. Uh, this I forgot to remove from the slide. I'll just uh, mention that question. It was one question which question was supposed to, to be like a CBGD kind of syndrome. CBGD kind of syndrome. The options, uh, answers in the options where uh, they were asking, first one, uh, synucleopathy, tauopathy, tdp 43 opathy and amyloidopathy. If you see my tackle mock 6, same question I had given in the uh, answer, explanation part, this was written. So I since I did, couldn't get the correct stem, I excluded the, during this discussion. Maybe next part uh, discussion, I'll come up with that. So I uh, forgot to remove that slide. So question number nine. So what is the time? Time uh, nine o'clock. Okay, just fast now. A patient presented with weakness of right side of the body with the angle of deviation of mouth to the opposite side on examination. There is a rigid. This is a simple question. I don't think anybody would have any confusion. So this is a basic MBBS question you have got. That's what I got. Anybody has confusion regarding this question? So I'll just keep the question once more. Darshan is asking, uh, that we'll discuss. Actually, I couldn't get the stem right. There was two questions regarding Parkinsonism. So I think the students have mixed up, mixed up the uh, question. Uh, so uh, previous question I'm telling. So I am talking just now regarding this question. Since I didn't want to confuse you, I haven't kept the question. We'll keep in the next recall. Uh, so it's not necessary that everything needs to be done today itself. I'll tell you. So by the time, if you know the correct question, just... Uh, send me. I'll try to find answer to it. I was just telling that in the mock explanation, this was given by me. So if you had, because I was not there in your exam, I am no, unable to find out the correct answer for this. So this one, a patient presented with weakness of the right side of the body with deviation of angle of mouth. This is a simple one, right? I, I, I don't think there is any confusion. Do you think this is the correct one? Yes, I guess. So there is no doubt that was a simple stroke occurring at the right side, right side with UMN facial palsy. So localization definitely would be what internal capsule, right? If uh, it was other sites like pons, medulla or brainstem, it would affect other, other features, other nuclei. That is the company they keep. So that was not mentioned. So I, and cortex would be having other features you know, the localizing signs, aphasia, neglect, hemineglect, apraxia, other features. That was not there. Some people think it is cross hemiplegia. Um, I'm not sure. 
so if that is so uh, it could be different but uh, from the stem of the question from most of you what they told me i think it is kind of a internal capsular stroke which uh, could be the most likely answer if pontine and anything is there uh, then the problem is that uh, if pontine and anything is uh, there then that uh, lower cranial nerves now could be more affected not lower cranial nerves you know the nerves right uh, 6789 Five, six, seven, eight. Those nerves could be affected. So I know there is confusion. You people are fighting among yourselves. I don't want to come in between your fight. Whatever I got, I think. But if otherwise, you need to know that. Okay, this is the thing. The final marks you will get during your like uh, when the marks come. So don't fight among yourselves. But this is the thing. So ten. Uh, this is one. A patient presented with diplopia on looking towards the left. So after studying uh, neuroautology and uh, neuroophthalmology excellently uh, taught by Dr. Sudhir Kothari, sir, this is this could be kind of a, like simple thing for you. On covering the left eye, the father image, farthest image disappears. What is your diagnosis? I don't know how simple. I the, like more simple question regarding neuroophthalmology couldn't come for this. So tell me the answer, please put in the chat box. Or is it that you won't answer for simple questions? Anybody, even those who are have not written or like, I'm expecting uh, MD students to answer because yes. Right, great. So diplopia, the farthest image. Uh, so it's left one, left abducens. So this was one question. So this is a trauma question. A 10 year old boy with complaints of fall from height and later develop acute subdural hemorrhage. I'm not sure whether that was given in the stem or whether you had to make out from the CT. He was unconscious with the GCS of five. Anyway, less than nine for sure. Pupil sluggishly reacting to light. Uh, ICP, intracranial pressure was measured and was mentioned to be between 25 to 28. He was intubated. CT is shown below. What is the next best line of management? Have you got any controversy in this question? Have you got any controversy in this question or the option? The options were urgent decompression without repeat CT. So whether to go suddenly take the patient to OT and decompress the patient, repeat CT after 12 hours and then plan for decompression if bleed increases. Repeat CT after 12 hours, then go for extra ventricular drainage and give three doses of phenobarbitone, high dose of phenobarbitone followed by next two doses, one hour apart and then plan for surgery. What do you think? So phenobarbitone, that option, since nothing was mentioned regarding seizures in this question, I think that option is out. Midline shift according to you was given in the option. Very good. If that is so, then it becomes a bit, bit more easier. If midline shift is there, it becomes a bit more easier. Otherwise, it is a bit tough. Uh, it, uh, it is kind of a neurosurgery question. I felt that this is the right uh, option. Urgently decompress the patient without re repeat CT brain. I'll tell you why. So this is based on the recommendation for based on subdural hematoma. So in case of acute subdural hematoma, if the thickness is more than 10 millimeter. And if you have a midline shift more than five millimeter, then you have to evacuate irrespective of the GCS. But if the patient is in coma, GCS score is less than nine, should also then also you should undergo, you should undergo ICP monitoring. In that case, ICP monitoring, if it exceeds 20 millimeter, then also this all satisfies this question. So if the stem was this, and if you follow this table based on neurosurgery guidelines, definitely you have to go for this. So keep this table in mind. Uh, if anybody wants a table, I will put in the group or you can message me. Uh, I'll tell that. So this is another table in any neurosurgical procedure in case of a traumatic brain injury, whether you have to go for surgical intervention immediately or will we wait for this? Uh, to subside or you go for a conservative management. That is the question. So 
based on the stem of the question and the CT given, I think most likely, even if there is no midline shift, we have to go for urgent decompression based on the GCS given, based on the ICP given, and uh, what you call it? some other things were also given, right? Uh, what is it? GCS, ICP, and yeah, that's it. That's it. So we cannot wait for 12 hours. And so you know other methods to find out increase in bleed and all. Na? So that also keep in mind how to prognosticate ICH. This question was asked. The question stem, I'll tell it was an elderly lady with dementia. And the patient is asked to show how to brush your teeth. She is unable to do, do so, makes purposeless movements initially, then shows the finger and tries to brush the teeth like this. Am I right? Uh, can anybody tell in the chat box uh, uh, whether this question which I got is similar in the lines? Yes. Yes, right? Yes. Very good. So, and uh, the options like uh, were like this, right? Okay. So, if it is like this, the most likely answer is IDO motor apraxia. I'll tell you why. So, IDO motor apraxia. So, the patient has got an idea of what brushing is. That is why he is trying to brush with a brush. That is the simple way of looking at it. So, ideational is characterized by loss of ability to conceptualize. Even the concept is not there in that patient. And definitely that sequencing is lost. And difficulty with multi-step uh, actions is lost. And uh, pantomiming with spoon and all is difficult. Please, please read through. And these conceptual and ideational are kind of synonymously used in a general uh, usage. Because concept is lost in total. So using a to tool incorrectly or not for the intended purpose. So for example, if you give a scissors, the person starts to write with that. So that is an example of concept. The concept is lost. Brushing the teeth with a spoon when the spoon is given. So it is a very important topic, a vast one. Try to go through it. Idea motor, I'll tell you, this is actually a bit intricate. I'll tell you, it can, the patient can conceptualize the action cognitively. He knows that you have asked to brush the teeth, but he's unable to execute. That is why he is faltering. He's doing something else. If you give multiple times, you say the same thing and try, try to help him out, slowly he improves. So that is idea motor. He has the idea. So if the idea is lost, the concept is lost, then it is kind of ideational or conceptual. If idea motor, that motor idea is there, motor part is lost. And it has got idea motor. It's not plain this thing. It has got, I'll go a bit deep. Just to tell your, if somebody has tell, uh, telling that why not C, why not D, uh, A, B and all, I'll tell you. This is idea motor one. Idea motor has got specific areas for you. When you go to neurology, when you enter into neurology, maybe in an institute or something, you will learn. It has got other specific changes like internal configuration error, external configuration error, error of movement, error of amplitude. And out of one is error, internal configuration error. That is, if and one type of internal configuration error is body part as object error. So this patient is typically having body part as object error. So when he asks to brush the teeth, he is, you can read through, that is, he is brushing the fingers through the hair. That is, uh, brush, when asked to comb the teeth, uh, comb the hair, he is combing with the hand. This is body part as. So he is thinking that his hand fingers are the comb. So in our patient, it was toothpaste. So that is also written. And to rub a finger against the teeth when asked to demonstrate how to use a toothbrush. So it is a type of internal configuration error in a patient with ideomotor apraxia. So this is more deep, more specific. So now I hope you are clear. So there is not much confusion. Uh, if the stem was a bit different, a stem of the question you have recollected and given me is different, then the answer would be different. I, I admit that. Otherwise, um, this is the most likely answer. The answer is ideal motor one. So read apraxia before joining neurology. Read apraxia if you are planning to write the exam next time. Two advices. Two, two, two types of people listening to this.
then an elderly came with history of dementia for past four years. All of the following investigation is to be done in this patient, except uh, do you think the options and the questions stem are the same or do you think there are any difference in the option? Please tell me. Same. Okay. So what do you think the answer is? By this time, you must have seen, uh, like, you must have analyzed how much effort is there to put these questions in place to find the answers. You think CSS study is not needed? Yes, I also think the same. CSS study is not needed. Uh, this is from one of my tactical questions I just uh, found out. So there is a uh, there is nothing regarding CSF being mentioned, but. Uh, in Bradley, there is a word that EG is not needed and uh, B12 and thyroid definitely have to be done in case of all dementia patients. That word is there. And it is quite understood that any dementia, that any dementia patient, we have to go for scanning. That is a MRI brain. This kind of mandatory. But CSF, which is an invasive procedure, we will do only in kind, case of selected cases. Right? So that, yes, exactly. Exactly. Other than B, all other options uh, rules out reversible causes. So I don't think reversible causes were asked, right? So four years dementia, that is the question, I guess. Okay. So that clears that question. I think uh, 14th question. Uh, 15, after 15, we'll just ask whether any doubts are there. Adult patient came with ichthyosis, skeletal abnormalities, funda picture, which of the following is not in this condition. I think the same uh, question I have given in my mock exam, somewhere I have given, I couldn't recollect it. If somebody knows where I have asked, you can just message me. Um, same thing. So what do you think? It's pretty simple at this point. Were the options the same or were, were any confusing options there in this patient? Okay, so uh, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, when you like, uh, when you discuss all this now, uh, the different causes, uh, we have asked this question multiple times during our mock exams. So I don't think this, yeah, same, same, uh, this uh, explanation I had given in one of the exam. So same thing for refsens, retinitis pigmentosa and all. So that option is good. Okay, so that is clear. And what is the clinical feature you expect in a patient with a lesion as shown in the figure? So Sudhir Kotari sir had completely cleared your all this part for you. So I, and uh, you must have definitely all those listening to find neurophilia must have answered this rightly, even if the options seemed a bit confusing to most of them, right? Restriction of adduction on looking towards the right. Right. And abductic is diagnosed towards the left side. So was this a question the same? So here the lesion is in the right side. Lesion is in the right side. So right eye, there should be adducting, adduction problem. And left side, there should be abducting misdiagnosis, right? Okay, right MLS, fine. So I don't think any confusion is there in this question. Okay. Right eye, abducting left. I think I made, uh, I had kept this for a left MLF leash. Sorry, is that on looking to the left or right in option C? I think I just uh, changed the options for you. I think this is a pretty answer is not there. Okay, fine. So just just remember that where the lesion is in MLF, that I you will not you will not be able to adduct. And in the opposite I, when you move, that is there will be abducting nystagmus. That is uh, I know. So that is pretty simple for you. So, uh, six, uh, so till now, I think there is no doubts, right? So I think this exam, the, it was on looking towards the left. Fine, fine. I get it. I get it. So I made a mistake in recollector. Okay. Question number 16, uh, 27 year old female, um, 
has a fever with seizures and altered sensorium two days prior to the symptoms she had altered smell mri image is given below what is the diagnosis what do you think the options and the questions were like is it the same i know you must have jumped and answered the, uh, the so you may not know the other options you are pretty sure that it is herpes simplex uh, so whether a big stuff was there hashimoto autoimmune i just put it from my hand so what do you think okay so what is the catch here so the localization of a smell is smell has got origin from lateral temporal region so that is that shows that the lesion originated or seizure had an aura kind of an aura thing originating from the temporal region so temporal you know the, is the localization for herpes simplex so read this this is a very important table uh, so see this uh, infections causing hyperdensities in the mri um, all these mris you have to uh, have it in your mind because this this time herpes is asked next time definitely japanese encephalitis would be asked for this patient uh, so whether whether there were two options in the two types of questions or uh, in this i think they asked for the diagnosis so ijas is telling that its acyclovir treatment was in options i think that was a def different uh, question so if you know that question send to me we'll discuss in the next uh, recall so uh, i think two questions were there with same uh, herpes and all so that is why you are getting confused okay um, a patient presented with rapidly progressive paraparesis with respiratory paralysis later he succumbed to his illness histopathology slide as shown below so how did you come to a conclusion of uh, rabies and all there is no history of bite given nothing is given gbs like illness then it should be something else na so you are telling gbs like illness was mentioned i accept that uh, so you think okay neuroparalytic gbs like presentation of rabies right excellent so the okay so i'll tell you one situation okay i forgot to enlarge the picture so this was uh, this is me and my post graduate dm second year post graduate uh, we so i am not proper actually keeping a mask there so this is a uh, one patient who came to me uh, so referred as a case of uh, gbs gillen barry syndrome he is uh, now lying down in the nerve conduction table so we are seeing whether the patient is having gbs yes you can see there is no reflex a reflex is there a reflexic quadriparesis is unable to move so he came on a december uh, 15 december 16 i guess so this yellow sh sheet you see here na this i bought it from him because uh, i'll tell you why so he is having a reflexic, reflexic quadriparesis gbs is suspected uh, medicine uh, people uh, had told that is gbs please take over the case uh, you start him on ivig that is intra uh, intravenous immunoglobulin or plex uh, then the patient will get cured for sure so uh, that yellow okay, sheet you remember so keep in mind now uh, i am i found we found actually one of my uh, teachers also found that the patient was having fibrillations kind of fibrillatory movements or fasciculatory movements in arms he was having kind of tremors and if you see that cannula region there cannula put there one cannula is put if you can see there is some injury in the re region so that is when i became curious and i asked him what happened why why is your hand injured in that region then only he gave the history that on uh, november 23 now but 23rd he was bitten by a bunch of uh, i think wolves jackals 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 so he and his friends while returning were bitten by bunch of jackals so uh, this is a neuroparalytic rabies but unfortunately we couldn't do anything so you can see the patient talking speaking to me happily there within two days he expect that is the severity of the issue so this is the uh, report uh, we got 
this was on 17 12 2021 we got the report so this is positive for rabies okay so next day when i went to trishur zoo uh, <laughs> if you see under last line there potent carrier of rabies virus i showed my uh, daughter also this potent carrier of rabies virus indian jackal he typically showed that uh, that when I, we showed what had bitten him he told that it was jackal so that is how interesting neurology is it's not just mcqs it's more than that so diagnostic testing for uh, this in canada i just kept a slide you can read rabies for yourself so that is one case a patient underwent gastric surgery and post surgery developed features of vitamin b12 deficiency related neuropathy which other conditions uh, presents in the similar way I, I i don't think there is any confusion regarding this question right there is no confusion yes so th this we have discussed multiple times regarding based on the mri finding we have discussed that posterior uh, region, posterior, what you call posterior part, if there is hyperintensity in a spinal MRI, we think of nitric oxide poisoning. So these are the other DC, DDs which you have to keep in mind. So one more thing I'll tell you. Uh, so I had to encounter a patient who had uh, this thing, uh, posterior column sensation loss, severe ataxic uh, peripheral neuropathy, at ataxic neuropathy. So I asked him regarding all this history, vitamin B12, his vitamin B12 was normal. So initial first thing which we do is peripheral smear, MCV was normal, vitamin B12 assay was checked. So copper deficiency, well, he didn't have any surgery or nothing suggestive of copper deficiency. Folate, everything was normal. So nitric oxide, you, even if you hear this nitric oxide, let me tell you, nitric oxide is not nowadays used in case of anesthesia for sedating a patient. So just it's a theoretical value you have right now. And it should be inhaled in large quantities to cause this symptom. So that no person does, no anesthetist does. That's what I feel. I talked to the anesthetist also regarding that. So this patient, which I am talking, didn't have anything. But he was taking zinc as a drug for some skin infections. Some skin uh, uh, tag or something. He was taking zinc daily tablets. So that also you keep in mind. Excess zinc can cause copper deficiency. So excess zinc can cause copper deficiency and can cause this thing, a similar SACD, subacute combined degeneration kind of picture. So keep that in mind. Paresthesia was mentioned in that patient. Even then uh, it is vitamin, uh, this copper deficiency most likely answered in that case. Uh, question number 18. Uh, a patient after taking ATT, including HRZD, followed by HR for nine months, develop peripheral neuropathy. What should be given to the patient to prevent this? I think this is kind of straightforward question, which you must have encountered in your day-to-day uh, -day TB practice. So if you are working in a government college, uh, government hospital and uh, facing TB patients, you know the regimen. It doesn't end with HRZD. You have to give one more thing. That is... Benadon, that is the trade name which we use, right? So what is that? So question indirectly would be, what is that? So it is B6. So study this adverse reactions regarding anti-tubercular drugs. Uh, so you know INH, why does INH cause this kind of peripheral neuropathy? And why does it cause B6 deficiency? INH structure is kind of similar to B6 and it hence and antagonizes its action so definitely it needs to be supplemented and you know i actually actually uh, uh, patients uh, women taking oral contraceptives also need to take b6 also drugs like penicillamine used in rheumatoid wilson's etc also need supplementation with b6 so hope i think you are all clear with this um, now, 19th question, a 40-year-old female presented with altered sensorium, behavioral disturbance, and facio-brachial dystonic seizures. On investigation, she had ovarian tumor. What is your diagnosis? Is, is the options the same? Hashimoto's, NMDA, uh, Arpus, Bickerstaff? Are you sure? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure you must have just... So EEG was given for this patient. So EEG was given. That I have put in the background. 
So if you see the background of the slide, yes, it is Delta brush. Actually, in this kind of NMDAR, you don't uh, just think that it is just Delta brush. Delta brush you can find in normal sleep also. EG should show kind of a, what is called an extreme delta, delta brush. So orofacial dyskinetic movements plus extreme delta brush would suggest a anti-NMDAR encephalitis. And one other clue is actually this thing, ovarian tumors in case of young females. The question here uh, given to me was 40 year old. Are you sure about this kind of things? Please uh, mention in my, like send to me the, in my WhatsApp or anything. Okay, you think it's young or 20 years, good. 40 years, age is lessening. So uh, you think it's 40 and 20, 14 and 20, one four. So I think uh, 40 and 14 got confused. Younger, oh fine. So these are what we call Delta brushes. So you know the waves in EEG, right? B, B, what do you call? Bad dance. That is the how I remember this waves in EEG. Bad dance, beta, alpha, delta, theta. Sorry, theta, delta, that dance. So a delta brush is actually delta waves having brush-like things. That is brush-like things, delta waves. So if you see count, there is only three waves in one second, three waves in one second. So that is actually delta range with brush-like things there. So it suggests a delta. So NMDA is the most likely thing. So you said, you only said that is a younger female. Yes, definitely you have to think it's a younger female. And definitely you have to check for ovarian malignancy. This is one of my patients uh, uh, who had, who came referred by a local healer. You know, the traditional healers, right? They had referred because they thought that some uh, demon has processed her because she was doing like this, she was standing, she was maniac. And uh, that is what they thought. And they tried their advanced medications and they, she couldn't uh yeah <laughs> somebody knows this history how do you know okay so yeah i showed you in fine neurophilia yes what you see here is actually the orofacial this, this thing is being told now you see the facial movements there facial movements you can see yeah that is what is called orofacial dyskinesias or facio-brachial dystonic seizures in case of an nmda uh, this thing just wanted to show you. So that is how it's clinically relevant. She had an MDA positivity. She had ovarian tartoma. She had extreme Delta brush. So, uh, I think you are pretty clear until now, a patient presented with some motor and sensory deficit with visual dysfunction and hearing loss with MRI as shown below. Uh, do you remember? Yeah. So, you know, the day before the exam, the night, I don't know, somehow I was reading for one of my exams. So I put this, just this slide for you. Uh, and the same MRI, according to one of the students, uh, the same MRI has, uh, was asked. So some people may think I had leaked it, but I definitely don't know. It was a gut feeling that I should tell you what I am reading. So I had sent that. So it is actually a Susac disease. So uh, Susac's disease is associated with features which can mimic a multiple sclerosis like lesion. Additional things would be a branch retinal, so retinopathy, the kind of a branch retinal artery occlusion and hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss. And a few findings, how to differentiate it from multiple sclerosis and Susac's. Uh, I will make a, uh, I have made a slide uh, actually, I, because of lack of time, I thought I will not put it here. Uh, I will compile it and uh, somehow sub circulate to you all this. Uh, so how to differentiate a multiple sclerosis lesion from a Susax syndrome. Susax is rare, but even then you have to have a high index of suspicion. So every time you tell a DD of a corpus callosum lesion, you have to have this in mind. So a child presented with, with episodic dystonia and uh, movement disorder, which was transiently present only with movements. His PRT gene was found to be positive. What is the best treatment for him? Yeah, but are you sure the options were the same? Yes, definitely common speed. So I'll tell you, uh, my uh, sir's name is Dr. Krishnadas. He is my teacher and mentor. 
so one time um, i think one pa- child had come to the opd uh, so he when he came running to the opd he developed this kind of moments so sir immediately diagnosed and i was in the pg uh, i was doing my pg this happened so he showed me that this is actually a, a paroxysmal kinesogenic dyskinesia so when he had this moment uh, he developed dyskinesia and uh, we started on oxytocin he never had this and i'll tell you one thing that patient's eg also so i'm telling about my patient that eg also showed some um, spikes in that patient so i remember that case clearly so there are other varieties like uh, kinesogenic non kinesogenic and exercise induced it is there in bradley i have discussed in my mock exams as well as i think uh, this was discussed by dr ashish in uh, uh, fine neurophilia hyperkinetic movement disorders the table dr ashish had described i have just gone back and looked into it uh, so it was there clearly discussed uh, so if you had followed fine neurophilia you wouldn't have missed it um uh, what would you do next in this patient who presented with progressive myelopathy so mr angiography dsa cat myelography usg spine so it is almost time if you want me to stop i will stop uh, because i am also tired uh, i think this should be the last question uh, so be with me in this question so what do you think so what do you see here this is the supposed question which was sent to me by you all so this is a spine mri you know the csf is white here you know the csf is white na so it is a t2 weighted mri image so analyze that in that point of view just not for the sake of question alone i am telling you all this so uh, ct myelogram was i have written any other option okay you think it's ct myelogram ct myelogram actually is not done nowadays according to me i'll tell you why uh, if please correct me if i am wrong uh so mr angio dsa usg spine okay so i'll tell you a scenario so this was actually uh, the patient's name was aisha putti 48 year old i think 48 year old a female who was having severe peripheral neuropathy admitted just one big back she still in my ward actually uh, still in my ward but the problem was she developed proximal weakness kind of a proximal weakness she came with an mri taken from outside for lumbar spine so when we examined we found that the patient was having some features bladder disc, uh, incontinence features suggestive of myelopathy so this is our patient's mri this is not your patient's mri this is my patient's mri so uh, in fact uh, our patient's mri so here also you can see t2 hypertensities and if you carefully see there are some flow voids similar to what was given in your examination so immediately did the dsa for this patient so dsa digital subtraction angiography i take I, we do dsa i uh, i have done uh, we do dsa in our cath lab uh, for both uh, aneurysm as well as spinal so this is a, what you see here is actually the spy, catheter the vertical one is the catheter and when we put the catheter at that vertebral artery na no? not vertebral artery feeding artery and put the die you can see how the artery goes so this is what a normal artery looks like and this is what a artery with a dural av fistula looks like so a lesion presenting as thoracic myelopathy could be as somebody told it could be an avm or it can be a dural av fistula the most common presentation is a dural type 1 spinal dury dural av fistula avm can also be there if there is intensive spinal lesion there will be could be avm uh, that is bit deeper so this was my case uh, 58 year old female so this was a type 1 dural av fistula now shifted to du- neurosurgery for surgical resection so dsa is the uh, investigation of stress so i think we'll uh, stop here with this last 25 questions uh, cock walk gate with parkinsonism is caused by which one of the following uh, i have discussed it somewhere i couldn't make out i could just retrieve the question yes manganese poison so i think i have done my best not to make any mistakes in these 25 questions i have many more questions uh, but it's bit incomplete 
so that is why so if you want solutions send me the exact words don't send bits and pieces which i already have try to sit and remember because you are the ones who have written the questions so i hope it has helped you so that's all so all the best and uh, inform uh, the ranks everything where you are going because that is the only thing which happiness and satisfaction what we get by teaching you all people so hope this fine neurophilia and all would you would follow because i know dm students also are looking at say fine neurophilia they have told me so likewise uh, you also will be benefited i think uh, more sirs teachers great professors will also come and join fine neurophilia along with fine like sudhir kothari sir mohammed bin sir and ashish sir has done so all the best to all of you and others who are planning to write exam on june and all Uh, try to join the group because uh, i cannot i won't plead you and all if you want you have to join because what, how how you interact keeps me going also so thank you thanks a lot uh to share